Hello everyone. In this video, we're gonna learn something really, really useful that you're gonna use all the time in your differential equations classes, okay? So I'm not going to solve this equation. I'm gonna give you the solution to this differential equation and then we're gonna check if it is actually a solution, okay? And then we're gonna talk about uh, solutions in general to differential equations, okay? So first and foremost, you know that this is a differential equation because it looks like a differential equation and you know that the solution to a differential equation is not x equals something, right? We talked about it in the previous video. Differential equations are not solved for a parameter like x or t, like the way that you are used to in algebraic equations. Solution to this differential equation is going to be a function, a function of y. And you can see this because this is Lagrange notation or your so-called prime notation. I don't like this because it doesn't show you with respect to what you're taking derivative, okay? Like dy dx is what you have here. So it doesn't show you that. But the solution should look like this. y of x equals, and x is, only x's have to be on the right side, okay? No y's. So that's how generally solutions should look like. Now, if it is actually a solution of this differential equation, that can be checked by putting that function of y, blah, 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 x squared plus, that's not the solution of this equation, but if it was, right, uh, x, you take second derivative, then minus twice first derivative of this function plus this function, and that should give you zero. And if it does, then it is a solution to this differential equation. So that's what we're gonna talk about. And a little bit the idea of superposition principle, but it's not really that deep. It sounds impressive, but it's kind of disappointingly shallow idea. Okay, so I'm gonna start giving, I'm gonna give you the solution. First, let me put down uh, this differential equation in terms of, you know, dy's and dx's, which is Leibniz notation, which I prefer because it ha it tells you so much more information. Because, you know, okay, you know, if instead of x here, if I had the second derivative in terms of x and then I had in terms of t, okay, this not would not be uh, your uh, first differential equations class. It would be more complicated. So, but still, this gives you so much more information, right? So I'm going to use that. Okay, so I, I promised you I wouldn't make you solve it. I'm going to give you solutions. In fact, I'm going to give you two solutions. And we're going to see if both of these are solutions. So let's check the first one first. So we are checking if this solves, this is a function of y in terms of x, okay? This is a solution we're gonna check to this differential equation. So what do I need? I need second derivative of this thing, I need first derivative of this function, and then this function itself, okay? I put all of that together, that should give me zero. First, I'm gonna find first derivative and then derivative of that, that will be my second derivative. Okay, so basically all I'm doing is taking derivative. Y prime is what I'm finding, okay? So I have to use product rule, okay? Because there is a function here times another function, right? Calculus one stuff. Okay, so x times derivative e of x, z of x. It doesn't, e of x is like completely, it doesn't care about derivatives or integrals. It's its own self, never changes. It's like Buddha plus a derivative of x, which is one, times e of x. Okay, second derivative of this function is if I took first derivative of that function, right? So I need to take derivative of this, which is again, product rule, or I already did this, so I know that derivative of this is x times e of x plus e of x. Okay, that was just a derivative of this. Now I have to take derivative of that and then, again, it doesn't care about anything, it's just itself. Okay, so that's all I need. This is my second derivative, so I put that with all the positive signs. 
uh, here. Now this is the putting it into differential equation part. So I'm going to like literally label this as dy over dx, second derivative. Then I'm going to say minus twice first derivative no this okay there but i'm going to distribute negative two there so that's my minus two times dy over dx first derivative and then i have plus x because you have plus y right in its original form plus y x or y of x or y okay this equals let's get the like terms together okay x times y of x i have that there i have that here that's two and then there's negative two okay these get canceled and then i have two positive e x and then negative two times e of x. So those get canceled too. So all I ended up with is that that equals zero, which is okay, great. This is how you prove that the function that I gave you, this is the function that I gave you, which is the solution to this differential equation or this differential equation is in fact a solution. That's how you prove it. Okay, so you can prove that this second one is also a solution. And I'm going to, I've already solved it, I'm gonna just show you, okay? So it is also a solution. And now I'm going to talk about something really important. Do you see how like both of these are solutions to this differential equation? Does that unsettle you at all? It shouldn't because You've seen that algebraic equations that, you're, you, that you were solving in school and in, uh, in your classes before this sometimes had multiple solutions. In fact, sometimes you would find infinite amount of x values that would satisfy a quick given equation. Sometimes you would find two solutions, right? Quadratic uh, equations sometimes have two solutions. So that's nothing that revolutionary. But yeah, it happens that these both of these are solutions. So not only that, but if I add these together, so if I said x e of x plus e of x is also a solution to this differential equation, okay? And if I said 5x e of x plus 6 e of x, that also is a solution to that, this differential equation. Or if I said 17x e of x, plus 16 e of x, that too is a different uh, solution to this differential equation. And I can keep going infinitely, right? And I make this video infinitely long. So there are infinite amount of solutions that I can come up with. And those would be also solutions in that form though. Linearly, I can add these. So why can I do that? That's pretty great that I could do that. And that, you, as you can kind of predict, could be infinite in application in mathematics and it is. Reason why I can't do that is because of something that's so great and special about this differential equation, which is that it is a linear differential equation. Okay, the way that you can check that and way that you should check that is um, by checking two properties. If this differential equation satisfies additivity property and scalar multiplication property, then it is linear, okay? And here I wrote down and I proved that, yes, it does satisfy additivity property, mm -hmm. and I can check this off. And I also proved that scalar multiplication property is also satisfied, so I can check this off. And if I can check both of these off, then I can say that this is absolutely linear. That's all I need to do to say that the equation is linear. Then solution to this differential equation, if I found one solution or two solutions, I can say that linear combination of that solution or those two solutions will also be a solution. I can say that with great confidence. That I can say because I proved that this was linear, it's also homogeneous. 
differential equation, okay? And this is a general solution, or these two solutions, this one, e of x that you checked on your own, this one that we checked together, c2, I guess, okay? So this plus this with their own um, some constants, let's not assume that this is one and this is one, can be, but doesn't have to be. So let's, you know, be proper and polite and uh, allow most general solution. So this is a general solution. So that's how you get infinitely many solutions because you can take C1 equal to 16 and C2 equal to 17, and then you can switch them. And then you can just go wild and just assign this to be 1111, okay? And then just keep going. That will be in, that will give you infinitely many solutions that will also solve this differential equation. Okay, and that's called principle of superposition. The name came from physics where it actually means something in physics. If you take two wave functions and the, if they interfere, then if they interfered constructively, then they can kind of add to each other and you have this superposition, the case of superposition. And here, if you kind of stacked these two solutions linearly, you added them linearly, um, this is called the principle of superposition, okay? Uh, so you can prove that what we said, that linear combination of solutions, these two solutions, which we proved were solutions here. The first one we proved together, second one you can prove on your own, it's quite simple. Uh, the linear combination of those solutions is also a solution. So you take, you know, second derivative of this times uh, or minus two times first derivative and plus this function, and that should give you zero and it does. Okay, so that you can check as well. So there you go. That's how you can always check if your solution is in fact a solution and if it is the only solution. Another function uh, that could be a solution is zero function. Y of x equals zero, right? That could also be a solution to this function, this differential equation, because the second derivative of zero is zero minus twice first derivative of zero is zero plus function zero, right? That equals zero. So that also solves this differential equation, okay? So you can really go wild and just never stop and find this this particular differential equation has infinitely many solutions. Sometimes you'll have maybe three or four solutions, so it just depends. So isn't that great? Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful.